What's going on, y'all? So What's going on, y'all? So we are back again for another what it is video. Um, I told y'all I'll be back tonight. Um, just got off work, had to come to the camera and get this done because baby, we got some stuff to discuss, okay? I hope y'all weather has been doing good. I hope y'all been doing good, bitch. It was snowing out here the other day. Okay, a whole bunch of places got snow, but thankfully it is gone. It's probably gonna snow another time this week, but hey, it is what it is. But, um, let's just get up into this video, okay? Because a lot of y'all been waiting on this video, all right? What this is... Um, and I'm saying this one particular part, and I'm not even going to wait till the end to put this in here. I'm just going to start off with this. Okay. First of all, let me get my binder. All right. Um, hmm. Got my notes. Okay. Let me see. Turn to the page of Jamal Bryant trying to snap back. Girl, listen, a mess, a mess. Okay. Just a mess. Okay. Here go my notes right here. All right, my trusty binder, okay? Y'all don't let me forget that for the Real Housewives of Potomac reading tomorrow, uh, this Sunday, you know what I'm saying? Um, anyway, so if you have been sleeping under a log and have not seen the stuff that's been going on on the Real Housewives of Potomac, baby, this is news that couldn't even wait, you know? And usually when it comes to, like, Real Housewives news, I'll wait until that particular episode come on, you know, so that we can see it. I discuss it within the review or whatever so it can be more congruent or whatever. But baby, this 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 is piping hot for a little bit. Not necessarily piping hot, but it's just been on my spirit. And I feel like whatever I gotta say, I'm gonna miss it by if I wait till Sunday. But um this past yesterday, actually, was it yesterday? It was actually yesterday, I believe. Um Jamal Bryant. Now, if you've been living under a, a rock, like I said, and did not at least see the Twitter tweets or um, the clips of when Giselle on real, not just, yeah, Giselle got her ass read the fuck out of here on the Real Housewives of Potomac. Basically, it, it felt like a damn near gangbang almost, okay? Because Karen tagged that ass and Monique tagged that ass, okay? And Monique tagged that ass with a goddamn binder full of receipts on just about everybody on the Housewives. And to look at the tabs that was on there. Former friend, which I'm pretty sure probably was Sharice or whoever, um, posted, which was Candace, um, you know, last lady, which was Giselle, and, um, you know, probably Wendy or whoever else, or it could have been Robin too. Former friend could have been Robin. I don't know, but baby, that shit was hilarious when I seen posted. I said, God damn, God damn. But anyway, Giselle put out there, not Giselle, but uh, Monique put out there some text messages, okay? She had received some text messages print out from a lady that was supposed to be a pastor or some shit or whatever that was supposed to be dealing with Jamal Bryant, okay? Now, Jamal Bryant and Giselle, they were married at one point. They got divorced because he was cheating. He got babies on her and everything. Gave her three kids. They supposed to be together this season. And it just don't seem like they are. The chemistry is just not there. I cannot be in a relationship with somebody that even if it's long distance, you just don't give me that feel. It's just not coming off that you really want to be with that person. You know, and I've seen some long distance relationships that worked, you know, and they actually look like they're in love and they want to be around each other even though they're not together. You can still feel it. You know, they're not physically together in the same space. I don't get any of that from them. Just like Rock says on her videos, it feels like they're friends. And that's just it, you know. And so, in this little binder, Monique basically put out there that daddy was out here cheating, okay? Not necessarily was talking to some other chick and was basically saying that the relationship was fake. It was a way to keep Giselle's job. He really wasn't claiming Giselle. You know, all of it was a lie. Calling him a pastor holy whore and just spreading his seed all over New Birth down in Atlanta. You know what I'm saying? And so, Mr. Jamal Bryant, he got on his Zoom the other night. And decided that he should go ahead and have a binder of his own, okay? And to say, 25 minutes worth of nothing. Let's go down the, first of all, let's just go down the list of what he said, you know? And I'm not even mad at him for responding because if somebody came for me, he got caught up in a crossfire because what it was is... 
Monique tried to get at Giselle. And the way to get at Giselle is through Jamal. And he just so happened to be there. And that's the way her to get at her, to hurt her, whatever. And so that's what she used. Now, you know, he could come out and defend himself. But if you're going to come out and defend yourself, make it make sense and make it believable and not do it upon a whole bunch of lies, okay? And make your, even if you're going to lie, make your lie sound somewhat like the truth, okay? Not something that can be easily dissected. And I'm sitting here listening to the thing. Now, at first, I wasn't going to listen to the whole thing. It was 25 minutes. And I was like, should I listen to it? Ugh, no. But I went on ahead and listened to it today. And while I was at work, I'm, I'm doing it. And I'm like, mm. he already, you know, for somebody that said that he is not really here for reality TV. He only did this for Giselle. He will never be back on Real Housewives on Potomac. You know, he don't like the negative connotation that reality TV gives off. But yet you hanging out, taking pictures with the people of Love and Hip Hop Atlanta and all that stuff. But you don't like reality TV. Okay, that's fine. Do what you got to do. But for somebody that don't like real, uh, the reality TV, you sure enough came with a, um, your own tagline. If you got receipts, I got the cash register. I said, bitch, you been watching. Nigga, you been watching, okay? You been watching. You know what it is, all right? You know what's going to get the girls, all right? They love a good tagline. We do. We do, okay? Moving on from there, he said that basically he's been single. Okay, and never now once did he claim a relationship with Giselle. Actually said that I am not doing nothing wrong. And even if I was doing something with somebody, I am single and I can do so. Okay, um, and I guess he don't consider himself, I guess in the biblical sense, you know, he's still single because he's not married. But you're still in a relationship, supposedly. He doesn't claim a relationship with Giselle in this 25 minutes video. You know, he doesn't claim anything like that. Even when he's talking about these old text messages, he doesn't claim a relationship. He talked about his daughters. And, you know, we all know that this show was filmed a year ago. And saying that his daughters are really daddy's girls. And we was like, from what we saw of the stuff that was recorded a year ago, your daughters did not look like they really fuck with you like that, okay? So you can on that on that one and quit trying to convince yourself that because you're not convincing us, all right? Kids will tell you the truth. Their body language will tell you the truth. And they're human lie detectors. And that's what it was. They was giving off the real, okay? I will believe the kids over what you're saying. Maybe y'all relationship has gotten better within the year that this has been filmed. That could possibly be it. But to say that they was daddy's girls back then lies moving on from that he started talking about the text messages okay uh, from this young lady that uh, monique was reading off the stuff from my thing of it is he's talking about something what well, say about this what happened july this or june this or whatever and how you know she wanted me to um edit her dissertation di dissertation and you know wanted to come work for me and was mad because you know i let somebody else work for me and thinking that i'm having a relationship with them and you know all this stuff and she wasn't qualified and she making the magazine and all this stuff woo 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 we don't care about those text messages. Please address the text messages that Monique brought up. Never did. Monique brought up text messages saying from this girl that you basically said that you are not with Giselle fucking Bryant. That's what we wanted to hear, okay? Didn't even, didn't even touch that, all right? We don't care about them other text messages. That don't mean nothing to us, okay? And that don't prove nothing. That still proves that you had some type of relationship with this girl, okay? Enough that she thinks that y'all was more. You know, that's all that it proved. And then he goes on and he says that Chris Samuels, first of all, says that he never met uh, Monique. Now, I'm going to assume if he's never met Monique, shook her hand or whatever, that extends down to Chris. Let's just assume that he's never met the Samuels, okay? And for you to come out and say that he has anger problems, he attacked, uh, tried to go after one of the women's or a couple of women's on the reunion, Giselle, maybe Sharice or whoever else. I don't know who else, uh, who else possibly was there. But to say that 
And then to say that he attacked a woman at Safeway recently. Now, this is a public place. That that because of who he is and because of who his wife is at this point, that would have made it onto the blogs. And you talking about some you got video? Where's the video? Now that would be your time to bring up that receipt. Okay. This ain't the time to be no coy and to say feelings or whatever, because your feelings wasn't showing us same when everybody put your shit on blast. No, okay. Bring out the video. Don't say, I have the video, but I'm not going to put it out there. Don't bring up the fact that, and this is what made me mad. This is the main thing that really made me mad. He kind of implied that because of Chris' anger problems, there, there are some issues going on within the household. And that almost made it seem like he was implying that Chris probably be beating uh, Monique's ass. I don't like that shit. You don't know what's going on in that household because you're not involved in that household. And like you said, you don't know this person. But Chet, you're probably getting this information from Giselle. Okay, that's what I'm feeling like, you know. Or you're just probably getting it from whoever else is around. Because how do you know these things when you just said that you don't know this lady? All right, so how do you know what's going on in her household? How do you know what's going on with her husband? And another thing that made me mad was he also implied that, no, he literally said that he's probably, Chris is probably dealing with CTE. And that he spoke to some of his teammates and his teammates told him not to, you know, address it or whatever. Who the fuck are you to say that you're speaking to somebody's teammates? I don't believe that for one bit. And then talking about something, you reached out to his pastor who are you to talk to somebody else, pastor? What are you, like, who, what? This don't make sense. It don't make sense. And then to imply that this man has CTE, do you know what CTE is? Do you know that CTE can only be found unless, correct me if I'm wrong, I thought CTE can only be determined when you do an autopsy on the brain. When you dissect that bitch and after the, long after death. But you saying that he got CTE. How would you know this and how would his teammates know this and anybody else around him know this? Do you have his medical records? Did doctor-patient confidentiality get broken and HIPAA laws and all that stuff get broken for you to find out this information? Who gave you this information? There's another lie. And I'm just sitting here like, bruh, you just spent 25 minutes to make yourself look stupid. If this was what you were going to do to defend yourself, you should have just sat there, ate your food, let the shit fly, uh, fly by, and just let it be gone, okay? Don't get into these women's business. Granted, they did bring you in it, and I understand defending yourself, but this is not the way to go because it just made you look even more stupid, more questionable, and it didn't answer or defend any of the things they brought up, okay, that were brought up. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, he did mention Giselle Daddy and how he feel about him. But I just said, what? And then talking about some, y'all may got my phone number, but I got y'all address. From who? Giselle? Giselle gave it to you? Because like you said, you never met these people. And then you made a point to say that he's from Baltimore. He made a point to say that he's from Baltimore. What the fuck does that have to do with it? Do you forget that there is a video of you a few years ago getting ran out of a street on Baltimore in Baltimore by niggas? Okay, because they wasn't here for what the shit you was doing out there. It's on YouTube. And if you want to find it and you want to go on my, um, it's a link. It's just a YouTube link. It ain't got nothing on there or whatever. I had retweeted it. Go through my, um, my tweets or whatever on my YouTube, uh, on my Twitter. You will find it on there. Or just go type it in on YouTube. You will find the video. I said, you from Baltimore, nigga. They don't respect you out there. <laughs> what that mean? You was getting your ass ran the fuck up out of there. Chris will whoop your ass. And this ain't me being team nobody. This is just me. If you're going to defend yourself, if you're going to defend yourself, I would have been the same way if Mon uh, Giselle would have did this shit to Monique and Chris and they would have came out with some bullshit like this to defend themselves. This the best you can do? This y'all was better off just being quiet. That's how I feel about the whole situation. Y'all tell me how you feel about it. <laughs> It was, it's cute for me, girl. Listen, it's some cute little fodder for me, girl. It's all entertainment, okay? Because I don't know none of these people. I don't care about none of these people. And, baby, it's, I'm just, it's shits and giggles for me. I'm just like, this is what y'all let y'all like coming to? For what? A little bit of change? See, Ashley could never. <laughs> y'all ain't finna have me out here acting a fool, okay? But, anyway, y'all tell me how y'all feel about that. Congratulations are in order, to Christina Million, who was pregnant with her third baby, and her the father of her child, I forget his name, 
think he French or something like that. But they wind up getting married right before the second baby. Um, they announced the second baby pregnancy. So, you know, congratulations to them. Congratulations to Cassie. Cassie, Cassie left Diddy. Cassie was with that man for 10 years. And we can't put it all on Diddy because she willingly stayed with him. She willingly stayed with him. And I don't know what she was with him for, probably stacking her change up. Because that's the only explanation I can get. Maybe she was young and dumb and in love. And then after a few after a few years, it just went from being young, dumb, and in love to let me stack the change up that he's giving me so I can go off on my own and be comfortable. That's that that's what it feel like. Because as soon as she left him, you know, uh, baby got the baby. Because she pregnant again. Mama just had a baby. Okay? And mama is pregnant again. I said, you know what? happy and in love okay she knew what she was doing but uh congratulations to alex fine and cassie uh miss amira um from um if you watch how to get away with murder if you watch underground she played the scene on underground she played tegan on how to get away with murder she is also pregnant so congratulations to her and her boo you know that's my home girl <laughs> anyway um moving on from that so, it was some drama that was going on with Tiffany Haddish, okay? This light is blinding me. I got this little, um, like, green light or whatever on my phone. And, baby, it's like, it's playing games with my eyes. Or maybe because my eyes is a little tired. I don't know what's going on. But, you know, we gonna, I'm going to knock it out. I'm going to knock it out. Tiffany Haddish, she recently revealed that she turned down a chance to host the 2021 Grammys pre-show. Because of the simple fact that they were not offering her any money to do so. And they weren't accommodating her like flights, hotel, putting her up or whatever. She would have had to pay for everything and find her own stuff. And, um, you know, somebody from there tried to say that this was always the nonprofit thing. And this is always done for free or something like that. I don't know if that's really true because then the president of the Grammy Awards... Um, the uh, Recording Academy, Harvey Mason, he came out and he had to apologize publicly to her because he said somebody overstepped their boundaries and told her this and told her wrong, all right? And they did not have the permission to tell her none of this stuff. So you got to be careful. You got to be careful who the fuck you hire because sometimes people get a, besides themselves and they think their job they, they add more qualifications to their job than what the description said, okay? Now, if your description of your job did not tell you to go out there and tell this lady that, you should just shut your mouth up and let the uh, people that's supposed to handle it, handle it. And then we won't have this miscommunication and this misstep. Because what you won't do to somebody that's like Tiffany Haddish, who is a blockbuster type of person, you know, she's not a little star anymore. She can go into any type of movie, and she has proven herself that regardless of how you feel about her, she deserves some type of compensation. You get a nobody. You get somebody that's on the up and up, on the come up, that doesn't mind working for little to nothing because they're still trying to build their repertoire. They're still trying to build their resume. You don't get somebody like a Tiffany Haddish to just come in and do something for free. And not in this economy, okay? She there, but she ain't all the way there. You know, mama can still use some coins, I'm, sure, I'm sure. We all can. But... That was a slap in the face, if you ask me. And she had every right to feel everything, um, however she felt, and to turn it down. And that's why they, and if they didn't do anything wrong, the president of the court recording academy when it came out and did a whole video himself explaining it and apologizing to her. You know, so they fucked up. Um, good news. Michelle Williams, like I said, she also, Michelle Williams has a book coming out next year. In 2021, I forget which month, which month, but she also has a podcast that's coming out next week on the 22nd. That's in conjunction with the book. I think it's called the same thing, Checking In. So I will be checking that out. Y'all know I gotta stay up on the latest podcasts and stuff. Um, who y'all listen to? If y'all listen to the podcast uh, things, I listen to the Scorpion Show. I listen to the Friend Zone. I listen to the Read. Love the Read in the Friend Zone, of course. Um, Holding Court. 
uh, with Ebony K. William, who will be a new housewife on The Real Housewives of New York. That probably will get me to start watching it again because I like the podcast and I like her viewpoint because she is a lawyer and she's talking about different cases and she's coming from a lawyer point of view. And it's really, really good. And also do some little entertainment stuff and she give you the, uh, the, the legal background to stuff or whatever. So I like that point of view. And then you got Dustin Ross on there from the friend zone. It's a nice little take. Um, I do listen to Tamar's Under Construction. Have you listened to the recent episode? Um, it's growing on me. It's growing on me. It's cute. It's cute for her. It, it really is. I will say that. Um, who else am I listening to? Damn, I can't even get my phone because I'm recording on it. <laughs> I'm looking for my phone like, damn, where is it? Girl, it's right there. But yeah, put down in the comments, uh, B. Scott. I uh, listen to B. Scott. Um... I was just listening to him right now. Denver, Drinks with Denver. Yeah, put down in the comments um, the podcast that you are listening to these days that are getting you through so I can check them out. Um, Lil Wayne. Now, the other week or so, I told you about Lil Wayne possibly might be going to jail. And he was getting charged, federal charges for uh, having a weapons and drugs on a plane that was in Miami or whatever from 2019. He has since pleaded guilty to those charges. Okay. He has pleaded guilty. Um, and I guess since this is federal, he nine out of 10 might get jail time. I don't know, but I don't know if he's going to get a lot, but he might get something. Okay. Um, and then on top of that, his ex-manager, Ronald Sweeney, is suing him for $20 million, basically saying that he was forced out, you know, for somebody else to come through and be the manager. It's a whole bunch of mess. And then on top of that, Lil Wayne sold his masters, including the Young Money Masters, for $100 million to the Universal Music Group. Young Money, that's Nicki, that's Drake, child, what? Why would, what, what would possess you to sell your masters? Don't sell theirs, okay? I thought they all day on shit. Like, that's, that's crazy. Y'all tell me how y'all feel about that. Um, pepper. Salt and pepper. Salt, salt, salt and pepper's here. And we're in effect. That is my shit. <laughs> Push it real good. Okay, anyway. Um, pep. Now, let me tell you something. Let me uh, uh give you a little background in my observation, okay? If you've seen salt and pepper, especially pepper from back in the day, you can clearly see that something has changed about her from the face to the body. First, you see the face. That nose got pinched all, to, all the way to like this, okay? I don't understand it. I don't understand. Listen, I'm all here for people improving on imperfections that they feel like are flaws and imperfections to them. As long as they do it in a moderate type of way, a way that looks natural. And I just, when it gets to the point where y'all get these nose jobs and it looks like this, and it looks like, how can you breathe? Like it's affected the way you, you see how my voice just changed. Like it's affecting everything. Like, how can you breathe like that? And how, why do doctors go ahead and let that happen? Like, I, I, I just don't understand. Okay. Um, you're making more trouble for yourself. You see that. And then years later, you start seeing that that ass start changing. Okay. And she just looked like, a upside down pee. I don't know. She just looked a mess, like an ant booty. That's what she had. She had an ant booty. Okay. And I noticed that more and more as I looked at the um growing up hip hop. Okay, girl, I can't wait till growing up hip hop Atlanta come on. Deb Anthony said that she like she really put out there that she support Trump. No wonder why Waka Flocka be feeling the way, girl. It's about to be some mess, okay? And then Lily from SWV gonna be on there. She was like, I feel like you being really ignorant. You're really ignorant, girl. I can't wait. I can't wait to see that. But um, anyway, so when she was on growing up in um hip hop, you can see her body changes or whatever. And then, you know, you can just see it's 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 clear as day that you have implants. D girl, like if y'all gonna do this, get your thighs done too, okay? Make the thighs look like they match the ass and the legs, okay? Make everything match if you're gonna get these implants, okay? And you want a, a natural look, you know, or a BBL or some shit like that. I don't know what's going on. Y'all, 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 the surgery girls will let you know what's going on in the comments because I don't get it, but, you know, um, 
And I'm not judging because like I already told y'all, when I lose some more weight, these arms getting done, this titties getting reduced, okay? And I'm, I'm not in that tense, I'm going to have to have skin surgery. So, you know, it is what it is. You know what I'm saying? So, I'm not here for uh, shaming, surgery shaming, but make the shit look natural. Mama got into a car accident and she had these injections and she had to get them things, um, you know redone because the doctor that she was using told her to you know get them redone or get them smaller or whatever because they was causing issues because she wanted them out so now she's suing them for you know convincing her to get unnecessary uh three surgeries to repair the damage that she suffered um from a july 2018 car accident she said the injections she previously had in her butt had shifted leaving her in this extreme discomfort. You know, she got the uh, silicone and all that shit running through her body. You know, um, the shit was getting hard. Um, she wanted to remove it, but instead to remove it, they just went on ahead and replaced it, the butt implants. And so now I guess she's having difficulties and now she want to sue the doctor. I'm like, if, she, if the claims say remove it, why you just didn't remove it, okay? Don't try to convince me. That's like if you go to get your car oil changed and I come in for you to change my tire and then you come back and tell me, well, this needs to be done, this needs to be done. I didn't ask that, okay? They try to do that to my mom when she go get her shit done. I, we didn't ask that, okay? Just just change the tire, okay? That's all we need. Rotate them tires so we can get the fuck up out of here. We ain't trying to be in here all day. That's basically what they did to her, okay? But you allowed it. You allowed it. You got to put your feet down, okay? Y'all got to be careful when y'all go out here to these um surgeons or whatever, and y'all really have to vet out these doctors. See, I am so fortunate that, see, my mom, she works in the certification of these doctors or whatever. So all I got to do, if I'm looking up a doctor trying to see if they got any malpractice suits, if they got any, you know, medical fuck-ups and stuff like that, mama, who this doctor is, look them up and see all of it, and she'll let me know. You got to do your research, okay? You have to do your research. Don't be so quick to do shit. Research. That is the name of the game. But I hope she get what she looking for because they did mess her body up. Her body is fucked. I ain't even gonna lie. She out here, girl. And it didn't even have to be. And now she in discomfort. And she probably gonna have to live with that shit for the rest of her life. Unless she do what K. Michelle did. Um, finally get that shit taken out. And then probably get reconstruction surgery for that. You know, she's too old for all this shit. Um, rest in peace to Tiny Lester. Lester. A.K.A. Debo. You know, he passed away earlier this week or last weekend. Um, they found him in his apartment. He was 62 years old. He had previously had COVID like four months ago. And they said that, um, they don't know the cause of death, but he was in the apartment with himself because he was talking to a friend that was supposed to come over, but she didn't want to because he did say that he was experiencing COVID like symptoms again. And just to be safe, you know, you be by yourself. And then when they finally found him, he was dead unfortunately i'm not saying that it was covid but it he he was experiencing some symptom like it you know he did previously have it but it's very very unfortunate he is a hollywood black hollywood staple black uh hollywood iconic a figure or whatever you know that debo character will forever be um, a classic you know and it's very much unfortunate after losing that's uh natalie the cell read the other week and then losing him <sighs> it's crazy but rest in peace to him and you know condolences to his family uh and friends sister act three coming to disney plus i believe um it's gonna be produced by tyler perry And that wasn't no shade. I just needed something to drink. But, um, you know, I'm, I'm a little concerned. But then again, you know, some of the things that he has produced has been cute. Just don't write on it. <laughs> no shade. No shade. We don't want it to sound like a Tyler Perry production, okay? We want it to sound and go with the sister, sister. Sister, 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 act like one and two, okay? Like, 
<laughs> Whoopi Goldberg will be there, and I think most of the main cast will be there. So we will see how that goes. Tyler wants y'all to know he's single and he's going through a midlife crisis, and you know um, that y'all is lusting over Tyler. Okay, I never thought I'd see the day. Imagine he was with his girlfriend. I didn't even know they broke up. The last, like, because when I was at his house, his girlfriend is beautiful, or his baby mama at this point, you know, the mother of his child. She's very beautiful, okay? I think she was, like, a model. And they was together for, like, over 10 years. I said, what, bitch? And y'all broke up? What the fuck y'all broke up for? That ain't none of my business, because I was about to say something, but that ain't none of my business. Um, it's something that y'all probably was thinking, too. But, um... <laughs> Anyway, let me move on. Let me move on. Let me move on. Y'all lusting over Tyler Perry. Girl, Dave was throwing shots on Twitter, okay? It's some young girls out there. Like, it's some older. This one lady, she was like, I'm 49 years old. And had she not said her age, I would have thought she was in her 20s. I said, bitch, 49? You looks good, bitch. I'll date your ass if you don't. Shit, I ain't got this money, but, you know, what's up? <laughs> But anyway, boop the door from that. Hocus Pocus 2 is coming out on Disney Plus as well. Um, and the main cast coming back, the Sanderson sisters. I'm looking forward to it because I love Hocus Pocus 1. And I was kind of late to Hocus Pocus, okay? Every time you... It was like for a few years, like maybe two, three years, it'd come on and I always like bypass it. But for the last couple of years or so, I'm, I was into it. I was like, yes, okay, I see the hype. You know, it's a cute little show for the kids, Okay. And for us in our generation, if you want to put it like that. They doing Cheap About a Dozen. That was another show, another movie that, from my childhood, I liked the original one. I liked the remake of that one. I liked the remake with Steve Martin on there, Cheap About a Dozen and Cheap About a Dozen 2. But this one will have Gabrielle Union and being directed or produced by um, Kenya Burris, who does the Blackish uh, franchise and stuff like that. You know, so I see how that is. Um, Black China got herself a new man, and then a supposedly a new man, which I don't feel like that's her new man, but whatever, you know. And I looked at the picture of him, and no shade, gay don't have a look. Gay don't have a look, but something about him just screamed like he could possibly go either way, which is fine with me, you know. I'm all here for women who can date bisexual men, you know, because there's so many women that can't, but I'm all here for it. Um, but, um, this alleged boyfriend or whatever came out with receipts or whatever and text messages and being upset because he's supposed to be in a relationship with him and he over there with her and this ain't nothing but a clout move and all this stuff is a mess. And I was just like, I just wanted to mention it just in case somebody wanted to hear about it. It was just, it was just a mess. Another thing that is a mess, this situation with Shia LaBeouf and F FKA Twigs. I've heard of her. I've seen her. The last thing I've seen of her was when um her and Usher did that performance, I think, on the last year's Grammy Awards. And she was twirling around that pole like the bitch is a dancer, okay? I said, I did not even know that that was her. And she was doing all them trips on that pole. I said, bitch, you better fucking do it. But anyway, I got to get into her music, okay? Especially after this. I got to support sis. Um... You know, she was with Shia LaBeouf. If you don't know who that is, Shia LaBeouf played in the Transformer movies. Um, before that, he played in Holes. He played on Eva Stevens, you know. And if you look at the erratic behavior from him, I can definitely see that all of this happening, what um, FKA Twigs was saying, you know, basically suing him. What is it? Let me read it. She has a lawsuit against her ex-boyfriend, Shia LaBeouf, uh, citing instances of abuse sexual battery and more at one point said that he had gave her std okay purposely gave her std you know um one incident they said uh it was just after valentine's day in 2019 she was in a car with him and he was speeding down the hall um speeding towards los angeles he was at the wheel driving recklessly um he removed his seatbelt and was threatening to crash unless she professed her love for him and returning from the desert he raged at her throughout the trip um once waking her up in the middle of the night choking her 
Um, after she begged to let it be out the car, he pulled over into a gas station. She took her bags from the trunk, but he follows her and assaulted her, throwing her against the car while screaming in her face. He then forced her back into the car, um, and that's the heart of the lawsuit, okay? He 34 years old. I didn't know he was that old, but, you know, we all the same. He older than me. <laughs> Cool. Y'all, it be these days. I, I mean, I don't mean to interrupt, but let me tell you something. Girl, I be so giddy when I find out somebody else is older than me. Because now I feel like the old bitch. Okay? I feel like the old bitch now. You know what I'm saying? I ain't I ain't the young bitch no more. I feel like the old bitch. All these youngins coming out. I'm like, oh, my God, you're so young. Like, enjoy it, bitch. Girl, I'm only 30. Um, He 34, I'm 33. Okay? But I'm finna... Th I'm, girl... I'm an old bitch. That's all. That's all. Um, she said her aim in coming forward is to explain how even a critically acclaimed artist with money, a home, and a strong network of supporters can be caught in a cycle of abuse. And I believe her. And this is going on. I truly feel like stuff like this goes on in a lot of these celebrity households that we'd have no idea about and these are people that we probably look up to or probably admire from a distance or whatever and be like you know i look to you for inspiration and meanwhile their household is in turmoil their personal life is in turmoil it does not matter your social standing how much money you have you can be the victim of abuse whether it's verbal sexual whether it's physical assault whatever it happens and i truly do believe her and then the singer sia she came out saying that he done something similar to her he's a pathological liar you know and he basically tried to put out something that said most of these allegations aren't true but you know if i had inflicted harm on people i'm sorry i'm going through a 12-step program and you know uh for his alcoholism abuse and stuff like that and i'm like if you did <laughs> basically according to these women you did and everybody's having the same situation with you and i can see him because you we've seen some of the erratic behavior from shia labeouf shia labeouf so i can pretty much you know see this happening and seeing this being 100 percent true you know i i believe fk tweets fka tweets we never really heard any drama coming from her so why come out now and to lie on this man you know so i believe it you guys tell me how you feel and i hope she get justice i hope she wins that lawsuit and i believe that she's gonna give most of the money to like um you know charities or whatever for uh people who are abused in in this thing you know going through similar situations so that's a good look for her if she wins um moving on to some more drama baby cupcake cupcake the rapper cupcake girl i didn't even know she was from chicago but cupcake and i never sat down and listened to most of her songs but baby mama said let me wake the industry up for a minute okay this let me wake the asses up all right this kumbaya shit is cute we trying to have unity is cute but let's get back to hip-hop when it was a little bit of competitive and we was going on wax at each other or whatever and we, it was all love or whatever uh let's see how the girls gonna respond to this the girls and the guys okay because mama woke up and said punch upload to her single how to rob remix okay and if you go back i think this song came out in 99 50 cent put it out and 50 cent went down the line and did the same thing it's similar to what Nicki minaj did you know with barbie dreams when talking about who she fucked and all this stuff or whatever and just listening to all these rappers and all this stuff nobody really took offense to it because it was about sex and shit like that but you know this one is called how to rob remix this is similar to what 50 cent did you gotta listen to what 50 cent he went down the list too he didn't necessarily do those things but it was a way to get attention and it got him that attention that he needed and got his name out there and whatever and this is what Cupcake, the method that Cupcake is using. And to be quite honest, I know people are upset at it and think that it's a desperate attempt or she shouldn't have did it because these people didn't do nothing. But this is hip hop. Okay, this is rap. And she said it's all love. I do believe it's all love. But some of the stuff, it was like, oh, a couple of lines. You know, the Lizzo line, you can find that in the full court. And then the Megan Thee Stallion line, when she, girl, she went after my boo. 
She went after my boom, said the bow got, she couldn't run because she got shot in the feet. Oh, God. I said, oh, my God, this is what we're doing. Now, on the one hand, when I first heard that, I was like, you know what? That ain't right. Who did what to her? Okay. But when he went on explaining and you know the history of hip hop, I was like, you know what? I'm not even mad at it. It, it, it woke my ass up. I said, okay, we can have both type of, we can have a different type of hip hop going on. You know, we can have that unity on the competitive a little bit and then not get to the point where, you know, we literally trying to fight each other and all that stuff. I don't think that's what's the aim, but that's how some people took it, you know, but I dug it. <laughs> I take offense to it because she went down the line. She went at... Megan the Stallion, Cardi B, Lil Baby, The Baby, 6 9 Lizzo, Migos, Offset, um, Wiz Khalifa, Tory Lane. She said, she said, Tory Lane's look like, is that too short? <laughs> Young and Bay, Doja Cat, Sukiana. Of course, Suki had to come out with her own little response, you know. Um, she the only one that I think actually did a song on Wax, and I just listened to it. It's cute or whatever. Lil Dirk, The City Girls. Uh, Lil' Kim, Chief Keith, G Herbo, Mulatto, Flo Millie, Slada Baby, Andrew and Doll, you know, so she woke the girls up. She had the internet talking. If that's what she wanted to do, she got her um she she met her goal. She met her goal if that's what the purpose was, okay? Because yeah. But I don't know if anybody else is gonna actually play into it and actually respond, you know. Um, I don't expect them to. Okay, I really don't. But, you know, she tried. She tried. She got the little tension that she expected to get. I don't know how long she thought it was going to last, but I don't know. How y'all feel about it? Do you? I, at this point, I don't even hear nobody really talking about it now, and it just came out. <laughs> it was cute. It was cute. <laughs> hip-hop, bruh. Hip-hop. And speaking of hip-hop... Uh, the new verses that's going to be this Saturday, I believe, on the 19th, um, it's going to be between E-40 and Too Short. Okay, let me just tell you this. I don't know no Too Short songs. The only Too Short song that I know is uh, Blow the Whistle. What's my favorite word? Bitch, what's my favorite word? Bitch, got to say it like short. <laughs> that is my only Too Short song that I truly know, okay? And E-40, let me tell you something. Dad, tell me where to go. Tell me where to go. Dun, 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 dun. Bitch, I'm gonna be up in that bitch and I'm shaking my dreads and all that stuff. Girl, you ain't gonna be telling me, tell me shit. <laughs> okay, but uh, yeah, you know, I'm gonna check it out. I'm gonna see what it's giving when I get home. But um, other than that, I'm not too really excited about this. I'm still a little salty about the Shanti and um, Keisha Cole thing, but I'm kind of glad that it got moved to January 9th, which is the week of my birthday. Just in case y'all know, my birthday is coming up January 7th, okay? Bitch, get old, but I'm still a good. <laughs> I put up the other video earlier. A lady called me sir at um, Walgreens today. When she, uh, she was checking me out, okay? Now, I don't understand what happened. Maybe she was looking at somebody else and she just, you know, got caught up in the tongue, okay? But I felt some type of way. <laughs> it wasn't rude or nothing, but I felt some type of way. I said, damn, my titties right here. I know they big and they can be flat sometimes, but these motherfuckers were sitting up today. You know what I'm saying? They were sitting up today. You can't help but see them. You called me sir. <laughs> My forehead look feminine, okay? I don't know what that means, but bitch, this girl. I said, my eyebrows ain't working. What's going on? What is happening? I was so confused when I left the world. It never happened to me. That's why I'm, that's why I was harping on it, because it's never happened to me. Never. Like, I never, not to my knowledge. But um, anyway, moving on to that, from that. Diane Wark, who has become Twitter's favorite auntie, okay, um, she said if there was a movie to do on her, she would want Tiana Taylor to play her. Absolutely correct. Okay? That is absolutely... I would actually watch that. You know, because she actually looks like her. For real, for real. They really they freakishly look like her. Okay? Uh, and she said that she might watch Guys To Be Real. Now, I hope that is back on YouTube so that, um, she can get a look at it. I am going to pass out if she gets on YouTube, on Twitter, and tweets about it. Bay B. Gas to be real was a time. If you missed it, you missed 
you missed the era, okay? You missed the era. Baby, the way that we be looking at these webisodes now, uh, some of these shows that be coming out on YouTube, that is what we was looking at for Gats to Be Real. Gats to Be Real was one of the first, okay? I don't care what nobody say. Are these parody shows and stuff? Yes. Um, congratulations is also in order to Tiana Taylor. She's the new creative, the, the director of the Pretty Little Things clothing line. So, congratulations to her on that. Tom Cruise got into a little bit of kerfuckle, okay, because, you know, somebody leaked the audio of him going off on the set of Mission Impossible 7 as some of the crew members who was violating the COVID uh, policies, all right? And since then, five of them have quit. Now, let me tell you this. Uh, on the one hand, I will feel some type of way if somebody is hollering at me the way that he was hollering. But in this situation... In this situation, given how things are going with this virus and, you know, they just not sending out some of the vaccines. I got to go ask my sister, will she get a vaccine since she do work at the hospital in the lab? I got to ask her that. I'm going to ask her that. I'm going to call her later when I get off of here. Um, I'm not mad at him for going off because you got to take this shit serious because I probably would have snapped. But they said the reason why this happened is because it's been building up and it's been multiple occurrences where people have to been told, you know, don't violate, don't violate. And so he crazy as hell. We already know time crazy. So I'm not surprised. Anyway, um, Lizzo got attacked. Lizzo got attacked. Girl, y'all just don't see it for Lizzo. First of all, you know, Lizzo get hate because she a fat bitch, okay? And then she get hate when she try to get herself in order. Girl, I just don't... Lizzo just can't win with some of y'all. Lizzo put out there that she went on a 10-day detox diet of uh, fruits and vegetables, greens or whatever, and to fix the issues that was going on with her stomach. She did not say it was for weight loss. It was to fix the issues that was going on for her in her stomachs because, you know, the month of November, she said it wasn't good to her. She was down in Mexico. She ate a whole bunch of spicy food, messed her stomach up. And to reverse it, she did this green this, uh, uh, detox, cleaning out her system, whatever. And she said it worked. She felt better, you know, got more energy, sleep, um, <clears throat> sleeping better and all that stuff. And everybody was attacking her as if she was using the detox to or promoting it in a way to like say this is how you lose weight and all this stuff. She didn't lose weight. She didn't lose weight because she even put up, you know, different days of her on um, during the journey. And she was still the same damn size. And she probably lost a couple of pounds, but I couldn't tell. Okay? And they just went at her. And I'm like, damn, this bitch is damned if she do it, damned if she don't. Y'all quit looking at these celebrities for y'all fucking, you know, staple of what you need to do. Do what you feel and let these celebrities do what they feel. You got a mind on your own. They're not out here telling you that you must do this and you must follow me and must. No, let these people be, especially Lizzo. Like, come on. Anyway, moving on. Congratulations to Keisha Knight Pulliam. She got engaged to actor Brad James. Um, They've been together for a minute, so, you know, it's about time. Uh, Congratulations is also in order to Zanique. Uh, Tiny's baby girl, first daughter. Um, she finally gave birth to her baby girl. Congratulations. Tyrese is still doing crazy stunts again. Um, this motherfucker put him, I think he was on an airplane, and he basically posted in the caption of him saying that the way that you beat COVID and the reason why COVID hasn't touched him is because he keeps the heat on in his house to 90 degrees. And COVID can't survive in heat. Tell that to the people that goes in, in these hot-ass countries that still got it. Texas, they still had cases up in the summertime, too, when they get over 100-degree weather, okay? And you sleeping in 90-degree weather? Oh, my God. Oh, my God. How do you do that, Tyrese? Let ask, Answer me that. Riddle me this, bitch. Because, bitch, if... The, if, if if the heat in my house get over 76 degrees, bitch, I get a headache, okay? I got to turn that shit down. You know what I'm saying? Ooh, how do you, how do you wet 90 degrees? He lying. He lying. He lying. Tyrese, I don't pay no attention to him, okay? Mm -mm. Don't pay no attention to Tyrese. Don't listen to Tyrese for COVID advice or anything. No. Um, Rock Nation, 
launching uh, this partnership with Random House uh, Publishing. And they got their own division of Rock Lit 101. I said, look at them. They just taking the fuck off. Girl, the Carter kids is really set for life. Like the Green kids and probably the kids after that set for life. Ain't that about a bitch? Fucking adopt me, bitch. Or give me a goddamn job. Girl, I got mad at them real quick like I know them. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Let me take that back. I don't mean to be pissed off. You know, I, I need all the opportunities that I can. I'm just saying we out here struggling in this economy. And y'all really got the resources. And, like, I'm a fan. But, you know, that's what it is. Meanwhile, moving on from that, congratulations on that. Um, the cookie spinoff that was supposed to come from the Empire, you know, cookie from Empire, is supposed to be going ahead at Fox. Fox said no. I don't know what they're going to do. They probably shipping it around to other networks, but I don't feel like it'd be right if it's not on Fox because that's where Empire comes from. But, you know, did we really need a cookie spinoff? I don't think so, but I still would have watched anyway. But, you know, shit goes like that sometimes. Sean Keast, Kingston, Kingston. We ain't heard about him in a minute. You know, last time we heard about him was because of what? Because of what? Car getting detail uh uh told and repoed or whatever he owned it uh on money to cars and jury for jury and whatever and once again he is on money and there's a restaurant out for him because he got some jury made and delivered and he ain't never paid a bill. Why do y'all keep on giving him stuff? When I seen him on that show, Love and Listeners, looking for a house, I said, How the fuck he paying for it? If he can't pay the simple jury, how the fuck he gonna pay the note? I don't get it. I don't get it. I don't get it. Brandy B and Max Lux are pregnant with their third child. Let me tell you something. I pray for the child. You did all of that abuse or whatever that you claim was not going on during that live last week, and she was pregnant the whole time. That makes the situation even worse, okay? Like, no, no. Ugh. I hope she get out of that situation. Vanessa Bryant's mama out here trying to sue her for $5 million, talking about something. She worked as an assistant and a nanny for years to her and Kobe kids, and they never paid her. Girl, Vanessa said, this bitch ain't doing nothing but trying to lie. I'm sorry to call her mama bitch, but that's what it seemed like. You know, she said she ain't never worked for her. Um, I've been taking care of her this whole time, and it's a money grab, and she trying to extort her, and she on some bullshit. I believe Vanessa. I believe Vanessa, because... Why would you do this during a time where your daughter is still in grief? Like, that's just messed up. That's cold-hearted. Um, season 4 of Snowfall will be coming back February the 24th, okay, next year. And I am looking forward to it. I am looking forward to it. Um, and the last thing that I want to say, Super Scent. Now, let me close my binder. and Put this back in my binder. The next thing I want to say, like, Super Sin, I don't understand. Like, Super Sin is one of the women's dad. I don't know. Um, Mama has a man every other three weeks. No, every three months. She has a new man. Okay? So, apparently, her and Sage the Gemini uh, pull up. Uh, what is it? Gas pedal. Gas pedal. Uh, that song. Him. Sage the Gemini with the green eyes. Girl, him and her, they together. They confirmed their relationship. And I'm sitting here like, what happened to the nigga that you was with right after Lewis left? Or you kicked him out? Y'all was just together a couple of months ago, and you were so in love and posting about him. Now you're posting with him, J Sage the Gemini? Like, what is going on? I mean, I guess. They say Sage Gemini is a user, so maybe he a little broke and he needs to lunch on to somebody that got some money. I don't know the situation, but it just don't look right. Okay? You're moving from man to man to man to man. How many niggas you gonna pull up in your house and you gonna take care of a super? Stop that shit, okay? But congratulations, you know, because he ain't a bad-looking nigga. But anyway, um, y'all, I was leaving out of work today, and I just want to leave y'all with this story. I was leaving out of work today, and the janitor was not there. It was a substitute janitor, and I can't stand him because he talks too much, and he gets on a tangent, and... You know, he talks about stuff that I don't care for. All right. He leaves out, and next thing you know, he starts to pray. We are literally trying to get to where we need to go. It is cold outside. 
he just randomly starts to pray with the blood of Jesus and, and, and all the angels and the black angels is coming in and whatever. That's fine. Okay. Protect my co-workers. Let them be okay. Let everybody get to where they need to go. That's fine because I got home safe. It was after the prayer when he said, you know, you just got to trust in God and you got to have love for God. You can't. The only person that you're supposed to fear is God because if you fear anything else, that's why this COVID thing is coming. Okay? And that's why I haven't got it yet myself because I fear God. I don't fear this disease. I fear God. I said... He said, that's why Job lost his family because he started fearing other things instead of God. And I'm sitting here like, I sped up walking so fast just to get away. And he just kept on going on and on. I said, not tonight, sir. This is my first day back, okay, after being on vacation. And I ain't got time for it. I <laughs> that is how my night ended at work. But anyway, I hope you guys enjoy the rest of your week. Uh, your Friday tomorrow. Tomorrow on Netflix, Ma Rainey um, with Viola Davis and Chadwick Boseman. That comes out on Netflix. I will be watching it when I go to work tomorrow. Uh, probably won't be doing shit else, but that's what I'll be doing for sure, for sure. But y'all tell me how y'all feel about this video. I hope you guys have a beautiful weekend. Stay bundled up, stay safe, and I'll see you guys later. Peace. Stop, girl.